The 2025 Kia Carnival. We have a new refreshed look with the front end, the headlights, the taillights, etc. It's not a drastic difference, but it is there. And let me know in the comment section how you feel about the looks of this minivan. Personally, I'm a huge fan. I think it's one of the best looking vans out there, along with the Toyota Sienna because that has a nice aggressive look. But I believe one of the goals with the exterior looks of the Carnival is to mimic a SUV a little bit because we obviously know about the minivan stigma. So I think Kia did a great job giving this a more boxy SUV type look with sliding rear doors. But the big news with this new Carnival is going to be the introduction of a hybrid model. We still have the three and a half liter naturally aspirated V6 made it to the eight speed automatic producing 287 horsepower. This was the model that I tested when the Carnival first came out and it is a gem, it is perfect. I really love this drivetrain. However, the hybrid is gonna utilize a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with a six speed automatic and it's gonna utilize a 54 kilowatt electric motor. This hybrid is gonna produce 242 horsepower and 271 pounds feet of torque. So very similar power to the naturally aspirated V6, but personally, I'm just not a huge fan of Hyundai Kia's hybrid system. It's just not that smooth in my opinion. I would personally avoid it, but I get it if you love Kia and this Carnival and you wanna save on some fuel and take advantage of their 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, then I suppose you can get the hybrid Carnival because the good news is Hyundai Kia, they really do honor that warranty. I know of an individual with a Kia Sportage and their engine went out at 89,000 miles and Kia did replace that engine. And I also know of people who went through four dual clutch transmissions on their Forte GT. And every single time the Kia dealership, they put in that new transmission for that individual. So this brand is certainly not perfect. That warranty is a must. And fortunately, they do honor this warranty without too many headaches. Assuming you don't tune and do other crazy things and neglect the maintenance. As long as you don't do those things, you should be fine. Anyway, back to the Carnival. The hybrid model is also going to get unique 17 inch aero wheels, as well as regenerative braking. And it's going to have three levels to its regenerative braking. You can control it with the paddle shifters on the steering wheel, but the hybrid will also get something known as e-handling, which is supposed to somehow improve handling by accelerating or decelerating the electric motor. So you have that. And we also have something known as e-ride, which uses specially tuned shocks to alleviate impact and bumps. So that's some unique technology that the hybrid version of the Carnival gets, but we don't know what the fuel economy is gonna be with this hybrid. They haven't unveiled that, nor have they unveiled the price. However, we can pretty much refer to the current 2024 Carnival to get a good idea about the price of this vehicle. I'm sure this is going to cost more because that's how it always is. Anyway, the V6 model is gonna get 19 in the city, 26 on the highway. Since that is the engine I tried and I was so impressed with it, that's what I would recommend for the simplicity, for the smoothness. And also when I drove the Carnival, it handled and rode exceptionally well. It really felt like it had a low center of gravity. It was one of the most impressive family car driving experiences I've ever had while riding so smooth. So all of this extra hybrid tech and the weird e-handling slash e-ride features that they've implemented, I really just don't think it's necessary. A regular V6 Carnival, perhaps in the EX trim, I think that's perfect for most families, but it's good to have options, I suppose. And I'll mention more about price and getting a good deal towards the end of this video. Moving on to the interior space, we have a subtle update here as well. We have more shapes and textures, as well as the use of ambient lighting. When you go up in trim level, you do get larger screens, like a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and a 12.3 inch infotainment screen. The size of these screens drop when you go with the lesser trims. You get a 4.2 inch driver display with analog gauges on the side, and the touchscreen now becomes 12 inches. You can still get the Carnival in either a seven or an eight passenger setup. You can also get the VIP lounge package with the captain's chairs if you want all of that. You can also talk to the vehicle by saying things like, hey Kia, and that will initiate the voice command system so you can speak to the vehicle naturally to control things like the HVAC 
and the radio. Also regarding the tech, we will get over the air updates and the screen should react faster and the resolution of the screen should be better as well. And if you do decide to go with the higher trim levels with the entertainment system in the back, you will get two 14.6 inch screens so your rear passengers can watch videos, etc. We do have some improvements with the safety tech and more importantly, there is no evidence of Kia enhancing their body structure to improve the side impact safety scores. So when IIHS tested a lot of these minivans, the Kia Carnival, it ranked pretty poorly when it came to the side impact test after they increased the speed of these tests. So it seems like Kia hasn't really done anything about that, but regardless, you buy any new car, it's going to be infinitely safer than any vehicle from 10 or 20 years ago. So that is a good thing, but I just thought I would mention it. They have not unveiled pricing, but we can look at the 2024 models to get a good idea. The LX starts at $33,600 as of right now and tops out at $46,700 when you go with the SX Prestige, but you do have to add destination to all of these prices. Personally, I recommend the EX, which is going to set you back $40,500 with destination. Again, I'm sure this is going to cost slightly more for the 2025 carnivals. When I did a nationwide search on car gurus for the Kia Carnival, there's only like 2,000 carnivals available for sale throughout the country. It is really tough to get your hands on a minivan right now. And discounts are pretty scarce. I mean, if you're lucky, you can get between one to $3,000 off of MSRP. That's kind of the average that I've been seeing. So I would at least try to get two grand off of MSRP if you're negotiating with the dealership. Linked in the description box below, I have a free leasing calculator provided to you by Auto Companion. This is a powerful calculator because leasing programs, they change every month and this calculator will update every month and it shows you the interest rate on the lease, the residual value and any incentives that you can qualify for in your region. So when I took a $40,000 EX Carnival with a $2,000 discount on a two year lease, the payments were like 637 bucks a month assuming you have perfect credit and you put no money down on the lease. The reason why these programs suck as of February 2024 is because the interest rate is 6.46% on the lease. So that's pretty awful. Perhaps you can do things like a one pay lease to get that down further, but for the most part, it's not great. And one of the reasons why I recommend leasing so much is because car quality has dropped significantly post pandemic. Most cars, they're, they're pretty awful now. And with a lease, it's pretty much like an extended test drive for two to four years, right? If you end up with a vehicle that's not the best of quality or ends up having issues down the line, you don't have to be stuck with the vehicle. You can just turn the car back in, or if you're lucky and you have some positive equity, you can just trade the vehicle in at a dealership and get an equity check cut to you. So that's one of the reasons why I recommend it. But in this case, I mean, it's tough because the interest rate is so high on the lease. Sometimes you can get lucky depending on the month and get a lower interest rate lease. Anyway, it's just good to know about this stuff and also being able to see the incentives, that's also powerful. So whether you're financing or leasing, this is still a great tool. And if you're really set on getting a hybrid model minivan, honestly, the Toyota Sienna, that is the way to go. I would not bother with the Kia Carnival hybrid. I would rather just go with the Sienna since it's more tried and true. And if you want to save on a Toyota, I have partnered with one of the largest Toyota brokers. His name is Jim. I'll have his phone number linked below. He does charge a broker fee. He's located in Pennsylvania, but he literally has the best Toyota pricing throughout the country. So you can reach out to him if you want to snag a Sienna. And I hope you appreciate all of these resources because this is the stuff that most journalists don't bother to share with their audience. But honestly, saving money in this ridiculous overinflated market is just imperative that you do so. And I want to make sure that my audience has every edge in this ridiculous market. Hopefully you use all of this to your advantage. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and goodbye.